I was mindlessly scrolling on YouTube as I usually do when I started getting bombarded with Minecraft from scratch videos, so I decided to make my own. Some background information. I had never made a game and the extent of my programming knowledge was console apps. Now, I actually want to finish the project this time, so I decided to create a scope for this project. The goal is to create procedurally generated chunks with caves and also block breaking and placing. Everything I add beyond that is extra. With that out of the way, it was time to start on the project. I decided I'd be using C++ and OpenGL, which I had never used before, so I had some learning to do. After wasting months on going through tutorial hell, I had finally learned barely enough to start the project. I was kind of unsure about how to start, but Minecraft is just a lot of cubes, so let's start there. I created my first cube with textures. The cube was kind of lonely, so I gave it some friends, but my PC started dying. As you might have heard, you need to fit cubes into chunks. You do that by creating a long list of all the vertices and then drawing it all together at once. Otherwise, you'd be doing a gazillion draw calls, which your PC isn't a fan of. Get it? Because, you know, the fan starts making me whatever, man. Putting the cubes into chunks isn't enough though. You also have to remove all the faces that are not seen. You do this by checking if neighboring blocks are active or not. If a neighbor is active, you don't draw the face between them. With those two optimizations, your PC won't have war flashbacks. The terrain looks kind of boring now though. It's all just flat. To fix this, we have to use noise. To create simple terrain, we can use a height map, which basically means sampling noise values for every X and Z position, and then raising the vertices to that noise value. We now have simple terrain, but it doesn't have any caves yet, since everything below the height value is filled. To fix this, you can combine the 2D noise we used with 3D noise. With 3D noise, you can take an XYZ position, and if the noise value is above a threshold, you remove a block. So with the 3D noise, you can carve holes into the terrain. With that, we have the generation done, but we aren't loading the chunks around the player. To do this, we can create the radius around the player. Anything outside the radius is deleted and anything inside is loaded. The terrain is mostly done now, but I wanted to add water and trees. To add water, we can just simply pick a water level and then create a plane at that height. I also added some fancy water shaders to the water to make it reflective and refractive. The way I added trees is to use a random number generator and seeding it with the chunks position so that it picks the same trees every time. With that, we have finished the terrain generation. I could go on to block breaking and placing, but everything looks kind of whack. You can't tell one block from another, especially when it's a uniform block like a sand block. To fix this, I added ambient occlusion, which is a fancy word for darkening corners. This makes the game look way better. This is how it looks without, this is with. The way to add in ambient occlusion in Minecraft-like games is to check the number of neighbors a single vertex has. The more it has, the darker it becomes. This might sound simple, but it was the most difficult part of this project. Granted, it's because of my shit program structure, but still. The only thing remaining now is to add in block breaking and placing. Well, there's a lot more left for creating a Minecraft clone, but let's be honest, the coolest part is the terrain and no one cares about actual gameplay. I added block breaking and placing by creating a raycast from the camera's position. If during any of the steps it collided with a block, I turned that block into an air block and reloaded the chunk. For block placing, I just placed the block at the previous block. If you're interested in taking on the same challenge, I've put all the resources I used in the description of this video. I recommend learning bits and pieces and trying to fit them together by yourself. Thanks for watching.